You know what it can do. You know what it's called. But do you know what it looks like? Trying to pinpoint poison ivy can seem like a near impossible task because of how well it blends into the environment. But the urgency in finding out increases exponentially to those who have suffered through it. We're going outside, Mommy. Especially if it's on your own property. Wait! Not yet! Because nobody wants to feel like they're under attack in their own yard. But the truth is, it's not that hard to identify poison ivy. That is, if you're looking for the right clues. And trust me, for over 50 years, I've been studying and fighting poison ivy. And I take every precaution to make sure people don't have to suffer from a poison ivy rash. This is our visual compass to identifying poison ivy. First things first, let's clear the air here to avoid any confusion. In this video, we're going to identify poison ivy, not poison oak and not poison sumac. You aren't going to run into these plants if you live in poison ivy country because each of these poisonous plants grow in separate and distinct environments. To make that distinction clear, let's look at the geographic area of where poison ivy grows. These are the grounds that cover the dreaded three-leafed plant known as poison ivy. As you can see, poison oak grows on the west coast and doesn't mix together in the growing patches with poison ivy. And as far as poison sumac goes, unless you're standing ankle deep in water, it's not poison sumac. It only grows in swamps. So let's take a look at the main culprit, poison ivy, up close and personal, and break it down from there. Exhibit A, the poison ivy leaf itself. If you notice here, each of these leaflets are broken into five parts, with each part designated to a different job. Speaking of which, do you know what else has five distinct identifying parts? Yes, that's right. The human body is a valuable clue to decoding the identity of the poison ivy leaf. For starters, it's very important to remember the head, neck, and two arms connected to the torso. To make this easier, don't focus on the leaflet's size, shininess, color, or edges, either toothed or smoothed, because those factors are subject to change depending on the plant's age, location, and exposure to the sun. In short, it is the bones of the plant which are the constant, reliable factors for identifying poison ivy. That is, the head, neck, and two arms connected to the torso. The flesh, on the other hand, being the size, color, or texture, are the variable elements, and you can do without them. And that's all there is to it. Look out for the bones of the plant. Now here are the telltale signs of what is not a poison ivy plant. You may have heard the old saying, leaves of three, let them be. It's practically a mantra in articles written about poison ivy. But that's a bit of a misnomer because there are actually tons of plants which are three-leafed but aren't poison ivy and are completely harmless. So let me spare you the trouble of freaking out over every three-leafed plant. First thing to know is if it has thorns on the stems or leaves, it's a blackberry or raspberry and it's definitely not poison ivy. That being said, not every three-leafed plant is poison ivy. If the three leaves are positioned opposite each other on the stem, they are a tree seedling and not poison ivy. So you see where the whole leaves of three quote can throw a lot of people off? Instead of the useless saying, leaves of three let them be, a more accurate rendition would be, leaflets three resemble me. As stated with the identifying factors, if what you're looking at has a head, neck, and two arms connected to the torso, then what you're looking at could indeed be poison ivy. Now, if you do happen to find poison ivy in your home, that is where you're going to need some help. Trust me, 
It won't do you any good to try and rip out those vines yourself. There's a stealth-like nature to poison ivy, which allows its vines to encroach in areas of your yard and settle in in ways which will make it very difficult for you to completely eradicate. Visit my website to learn more about ways of getting rid of poison ivy from your property. But as far as knowing if poison ivy is on your own property, just keep the five key identifying factors in mind when spotting a plant or vine that you're suspicious about. That way, you can spot the problem without having to suffer from it first. And if you happen to find your concerns validated, then, as the saying goes, if you see something, say something. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my website for more information and videos on poison ivy.